Okay, let's run through uh, a simple transform exercise. So you get the feeling for the overall way that transforms work. Um, we're gonna start with a, 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 an XML source. The XML source in this case, we also have been calling an instance. So you can see that it's a very simple instance. Um, the root tag of that instance, the document element of that instance is called source. Source has two children, title and author, right? The value of the title element is XSL. The value of the author element is John Smith. Okay, so far so good. Very simple, very straightforward. Just um, three tags in this, um, in this XML file. Then if you look at the output, the output takes the title of the, of the instance, so the title under source, and makes it into an H1 tag in HTML, and it takes the um, author tag and makes it into an H2 tag. Okay, very simple transformation. That's what's going on here. We're transforming the source into HTML. So what's, what's it gonna take to do that? Well, think about that in your mind, what it's gonna take to do that. In the, um, in the source, we have two values. One is in the value of the title and the other one is in the value of the source. And then we're gonna put those values into two tags in an HTML file, into an H1 tag and into an H2 tag. Okay, so you get the idea. If you were doing this manually, that's what you would do. You'd go into the source file, you'd highlight the, the value of the text of the um, title tag, you'd copy it out of the XML file, and you'd paste it into the HTML file where there was an H1 tag waiting to receive it. Okay, so if you were going to do this mechanically, You'd create an HTML file and it would have a blank inside the H1 tag and a blank inside the H2 tag. You'd reach into the XML file, you'd pull those values out and you put them into the HTML file. Okay, so we also show the HTML view. This is the end user view. And I hope at least by now you're comfortable looking at the, um, the, the tag view of HTML. So the HTML view and the output view are the same, right? One is, just, um, one is just from the browser standpoint and the other one is looking at the tags. And now you know what it would take mechanically to do that yourself. And that's all that this transform is doing. So let's look at the transform line by line and see how it does exactly that job. So we start with, um, with what we always start with, with is, which is the style sheet tag. The style sheet is the root element of an XML file. And that the root element of this XML file says XSL colon style sheet. And you now have, or you will have soon, this idea of what that XSL colon means. The XSL colon is a namespace identifier. It's like the family name of the style sheet tag. And it says, this tag style sheet is not to be understood as an HTML tag. It's not to be understood as Bob's tag or Joe's tag or somebody else's tag. This tag is specifically from the tag set of XSL. That means it's an XSL command or an XSL element. And so by any, whenever ever you see XSL colon, you'll know that that's a specific piece of syntax. It's a specific vocabulary word from the XSL, from the transform language. Okay, so as all transforms start with, this one starts with XSL colon style sheet. That's the root tag. As all of ours will, the next, the next child down is XSL template. This XSL template, match equals forward slash, is what you'll see over and over and over again in this class. It's the way that we're going to do transforms. Not the only way, but it's the main way, and it's the way that we're going to, to, we're going to use almost exclusively. So that XSL template, says, now under the style sheet, I'm a style sheet, I have um, some number of templates. This is the first one, I can have multiple templates, but this is the main one. And in our world, you'll always see this one as the main one. XSL colon template space match equals forward slash. Don't worry so much at, at the moment about what that match equals forward slash means, you'll get to that later. What I want you to see now is that it's the container. It's the place where we put our fill-ins. And you'll see as you look in here, there are two fill-ins there. There's an H1 fill-in and an H2 fill-in. Remember I said if you were doing this yourself, you'd have a blank HTML file with an H1 tag waiting for the value and an H2 tag waiting for the value. That's what's going on here. So squint your eyes a little bit here and you'll see exactly that output. You'll see the H1 tag and the H2 tag. What you'll also see is a bunch of XSL commands, XSL tags, all starting with XSL colon, the XSL namespace, that allow us to do that work of pulling, uh, pulling values out of the um, instance file, out of the source file, and putting them into the output file and putting them into the HTML file. Okay, so one other thing to understand or one other thing to see here, and that's the next command. We've looked at XSL style sheet. That's the root, that's the root element of all XSL templates or, or excuse me, all XSL files that we'll look at. We've looked at XSL template match equals forward slash. That's the one you'll see over and over again. And now one more command, probably the most important one that you'll work with in this class, and that's XSL value of. 
Now, what do you think an XSL value of does? Gets the value of something, right? You see that one a million times in this class and it's always gonna do the same thing. It's gonna get the value of one. You can think of it as the XSL cut and paste or copy and paste command. Copy something out of the instance, paste it into the, into the output file, into the HTML file. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna get XSL value of select equals whack whack title. Don't worry about the whack whack stuff. We'll talk about that later, but just see the word title for now. We're gonna get the title and we're gonna paste it right in there between the open and close H1 tags. Then we're gonna go in and get the, the, get the value of author and paste it in right in between the H2 tags. That's how we go from the XSL source into the XSL output. In between the source and the output comes this style sheet, comes this transform, comes this XSL file. The XSL file reads the source, pulls values out of the source, puts them in between the tags that are already in the XSL file and produces that output file, produces that HTML file. Simple as that. Now there's lots more complexity, but all the complexity comes in the details. I want you to really understand at this point the basic idea, which is that the transform reaches into the, into the instance file, pulls values out and creates an output file from that.